So before you actually start to sew on the machine, what I just want to show you is how the machine actually works under here. So I'm just going to drop off this foot. Now this machine won't let you sew when this foot is up, as it will actually beep at me. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the foot off and lowering this because what I want you to see are the teeth underneath here. This is what works your machine and this is at the, what does all the hard work, so it's doing everything for you. So if I just put the foot in the pedal, you can see those teeth are going around like this. So what they'll do is they'll actually pull the fabric through without you having to do any of the pushing or pulling. So I'm gonna put the foot back on. Very easily there. So I'm going to place the fabric underneath here and I'm just going to start sewing and you'll see that the fabric is being taken through so those teeth are doing this motion so your job isn't to push it because it won't help and obviously don't pull it because you won't move anywhere so you just need to let the machine do its job and you guide it very light, lightly here so you shouldn't be holding anything down you should just be very loosely just guiding it with your fingertips and you work out your best way to hold the fabric but as long as you've got your fingertips doing that job then you're okay. So now I'm going to just re-thread this machine up here. I'm going to go over the top and go down. We go up here. If we can't see that little bit up here I'm going to make sure the needle's in the top position and that appears. So we keep working from the right over to the left. So you don't cross any threads, you just work in one way over. Then there's a last little bit you tuck behind the needle to keep it nice and flat to there. Cut your end, so you can always lick the end so you can just tuck it through front to back. Then we need to put your, your bobbin in. So your bobbin goes as a on this machine with a drop down bobbin, there's a letter P, okay, so the tail comes down this side. You drop that in and then you catch it around the side. And then to pull that bobbin up through to be able to sew, we need to hold on to this top thread just loosely and we do one cycle which is down and back up. So I'm just going to hand wind towards me, down and back up to the top position and then I just loosely pull on this and you'll see it's caught the bobbin thread under here. So we can use your scissors to pull that through. Tuck your thread through the gap in the foot so they go right to the back out of the way and you should always check that you have that piece of thread that goes over the top of your bobbin so at least then that you know your machine is good to go there shouldn't be anything wrong so you should always have it threaded through there but obviously when you do thread that one, it's very easy to come and thread it. So that's why if your machine ever makes a clunking noise or makes any unhealthy noise, don't try and sew through it. Stop. Always check your re-threading. So check it hasn't slipped off here. And otherwise check that your bobbin has still got that line across. And then hopefully you'll be good to go. So we put the bobbin cover on, my bit of fabric, and I've lined up the edges really close together and I've just put my pins going this way because it means I can put a lot more pins in if I need rather than if I put my pins in this way I can only fit three on here so this is my preferred way of pinning so now what we're going to do is we're going to just stitch a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance all the way down here so we're going to place the edge of this fabric alongside the grid alongside the foot and if you're not sure what one centimetre is, seam allowance is, or 1.5, you can get a tape measure and you can place it where the needle goes into the fabric and you can see where your seam allowance is on the grid then. So I'm going to start right at the top. Make sure that the teeth have got some fabric to catch. If you start too near the edge, it might not be able to feed it through. So just start right on the top within a few millimetres. Hand wind your needle in so there are no obstructions. And then we're going to go forward two and we're going to reverse so we secure all of the stitching that you do at the start and at the end. So we're going to go forward, hold down your reverse button and your foot pedal on most machines. 
If you've got a fast machine, just do a little boost of just forward and back. Now we're going to keep the edge alongside here. And every time I get to a pin, I'm going to take the pin out for safety. And you can see I'm just controlling it here, so I'm not holding it too far down here. All of your control is just before the foot there. So when you get to the end, do your little reverse and forward again. Always take your needle to the top position and then Lift your foot up, take it out. I like to cut far away. If you cut too close there, you might have to re-thread your needle a couple of times, so always cut it nice and long. So then you should have your seam on here. So next thing, what we're going to do is we're just going to neaten the seam. So we're going to use a zigzag on the domestic machine. If you have an overlocker or a serger, then that's where it does a really lovely stitch, but it's a whole different machine. So the next best thing is for you to put your setting onto zigzag. And I'm going to make it nice and wide, so about, well, the widest your machine will go. And I also want the stitch length to be quite long. So when you are at home having a go with your machine, try all of your different stitches and try playing with the stitch length and the stitch width as well so you can get used to what they do. So I'm going to start right at the top. I'm not going to back stitch for the zigzag. What I do want to do is I want the needle to go in the fabric and I also want it to just miss the edge of the fabric so it wraps around the edge of the, the seam. So I'm going to hand wind the needle down and when I can see if it's going to miss the fabric or not, I can just readjust my piece of fabric accordingly. So now it's just missing the edge. Hand wind the first couple so it adjusts into its new stitch. So we're gonna go in the fabric, out of the fabric, and in. And when you're ready, you can then just zigzag the whole way down. Hand wind to the top. And that's what you should be with at the end. A nice row of straight stitch and a nice edge neatened. So from the inside it will look like that and the outside you have your seam. And then you're good to sew most things. So I'm going to introduce the sewing machine and all the basics that you need to know on the actual sewing machine itself to get you started.